On today's episode of Maze and Blue Corner, we welcome Chris Castellani onto the show. We also talk about the addition of Shondi Brown, and we answer all of your voicemail questions in which we talk about our most overrated fast food restaurants and which three Michigan athletes we would want to spend with to get through a zombie apocalypse. We also talk about our unpopular opinions, and we list our top three favorite Marvel movies. Enjoy the show. Yep. And we back. Welcome to episode six of Maze and Blue Corner. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have not subscribed yet or left us a rating, we would really appreciate it if you could do that. We know we're a new podcast, but we've all worked really hard on this, and also and all those subscriptions and ratings really do help us out. If you want to go back and listen to any of our older episodes, definitely feel free to do that. We have had some really fun guests and segments that I know you guys would really enjoy. And one of the most helpful things that you can do for us if you want to help the show, just tell a friend or a family member about us. You can't get enough Michigan sports content in your life, so if you know someone that would like what we're doing here, just let them know about us. I will be your host today, Max, a.k.a. Wolverine Corner. Joining me today, as always, is Ben Cooper, and we have Ryan and Jacob here from UM versus Everyone. We're recording this on Friday night, May 22nd. And since we last recorded an episode, Michigan Hoops landed a transfer from Wake Forest in six foot five shooting guard Shondi Brown. I know we touched on the possibility last episode, but now that it's official, let's get everyone's reaction on it. Ryan, how are you feeling about Shondi Brown? So I kind of felt like we were going to get him from the get go after he added Michigan to his uh, to his top five list. But so that really wasn't a surprise to me that he came to Michigan. Now, however, I think that much like I said last episode, he's going to be kind of like a I, I don't want to say poor man. It's just a, a different – imagine a different dimension. Instead of a different dimension, you have Charles Matthews, and that's kind of like what Sean D. Brown is. Like he's Stranger like, Things? He's like a great physical guard. He will he can rebound really well for his position. He can score inside and in the mid-range, and he's a slightly above-average defender. So I think that he's – that's kind of what he's going to bring to the table as a leadership role and a physical guard, kind of like Charles Matthews did when he was at Michigan. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, I think, I mean, obviously we don't know, but um, I think it'd be actually better for him to sit out uh, next year, um, even if he's able to grad transfer. Uh, I think he just brings a lot of, he brings size to the guard position. He can score, can guard all, can guard one through four, and it's just, I don't know, he'd be a really good addition to the team. I think he'd help out a lot. Uh, Yeah, I mean, we've, I mean, he's he's very comparable to Charles Matthews, but like, his stats are they're, they're pretty eerily similar when it comes to like the basic stats, but you're sacrificing a bit of compared to Matthews. I say you're sacrificing a bit of defense. Like his defense is still good, but his he can actually shoot free throws. Actually, he, like he's a <laughs> he he last year he shot 83% from the line, which like I think the last for a long time we've been frustrated with how Michigan does at the line. It's just so. I like that part because I'm frustrated of seeing everyone miss free throws constantly. So, yeah, that'll be I, – I mean, Aaron Wright compared him to Marcus Smart, so you'll I'll take him. Yeah, so last week I, I was saying exactly what Ben just said about wanting him to sit out a year, and I've, like, done a complete 180 on that. So I'm all on the Shawnee Brown hype train right now. I want him to get his waiver – and, the, and if he does get his waiver, I think he'll be our starting uh, two guard next year. And I think you might see Eli Brooks slide to the one and Mike Smith come off the bench. But that's a whole different story we can have some other time. Uh, but, yeah, I love it. I think he he is he's going to bring just a lot of physicality to to the guard spot that we haven't seen probably since Matthews. And um, just a really, really good, really good addition. I think Juwan definitely hit a home run on this one. So that's enough about Shondi Brown. Um We did break him down a little bit more in depth in our last episode. So if you want to hear a little bit more about that, just, you know, go ahead and search that last episode. Uh, Moving on here, we're slowly starting to see sports creep back in our lives. Um, NASCAR and soccer are back. Golf's returning soon. And the NBA is kind of putting together their comeback plan as well. I just wanted to get everyone's opinion on a few things. Uh, When we last talked about this, it might have been way back in episode one. Um, nobody was all that confident that we would even see a college football season, um, in 2020. I'm guessing most of our opinion on that has changed a little bit. So my question is how confident are you that we'll see a semi-normal college football season in 2020? And then kind of the follow-up question to that would be, 
Would you yourself personally go to a game if you were allowed to? Um, I think I'm very confident I don't, uh, that there will be a college football season. Uh, it just generates so much money that if there's any possibility, I think um, I think it will happen. Um, I don't think the spring thing uh, is really a possibility in my eyes. I think um, the biggest could be like pushing it back, maybe playing only conference games. And I don't, I honestly don't think there'll be fans. But um, if I'm allowed to go to the big house, I'm I'm gonna go. That's that's all I'm gonna say. There's there's gonna be football. I mean, I I don't see them canceling it, but there's not gonna be fans either. I mean, it's like it's not gonna be a normal year. I think like games will kind of go on as scheduled, but you're gonna see empty stadiums, which is, I mean, with how co- co- one of the great things about college football is its fan, so that's going to take a huge toll on what the season is going to be like. Our first game is in Washington, the loudest stadium in college football, so that's going to be a huge impact on the game, which will actually be helps Michigan. I mean, going to Columbus, the, host, the, the environment there being so hostile certainly has an impact on that too. So, you know, I, I think it's going to happen. It's just there's not going to be anyone in the stands. So, Personally, attending a game, no. I mean, I'm not gonna go to a full stadium. Like the, like with that many people in the big house, there's just it's inevitable someone's gonna have the virus and not know about it. So the only time I'd think about it is if like everyone's kind of like spread out. Like you know, there's a lot of empty seats and you everyone keeps their distance from one another. Yeah, so I agree with you guys. Obviously, it's looking like there's definitely going to be a season, which we're all very thankful for, um, especially over the last couple of months when we've been just kind of deprived of all sports. So um, everything's trending towards, you know, sports being back, you know, sooner rather than later. Um, and then I, I, I did see Ohio State's um, athletic director, and there have been some other people that have been speaking on, you know, holding – uh, games with 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 people, whatever in attendance. Um, if that's the case, great. Um, you're not going to see me going to the game. Uh, it's, just, it's just unnecessary if you ask me. And I know that there's plenty of diehard fans that, um, that they're, they're going to be at the big house if they're allowed to be. And I respect that. That's their decision. But um, kind of I know I tweeted about this too. The, the in-house um, you know, viewing experience for a football game at your house. It's never been better. You know, it, it's, I, I don't see the point of risking anything, either my health or anybody else's health by, by going to a football game this year. It just seems unnecessary and it seems a little selfish to me. But again, I would never judge someone for doing that at all. Yeah, exactly. I'm kind of, I'm kind of on board with the last few statements. I think that we are probably going to get a football season, but I, it's my opinion that, we're, that they're not going to have any fans. I'm, I think that that's like a common, a common thought is that there's not going to be many fans this season. I think it's been made well known that. And uh, if I had the chance to go to one, uh, I personally would not. As much as I love going to football and basketball games, mostly like both of them, but we're talking about football. I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk getting COVID to go to a football game. Because there are so many people there, and like Jacob said, you're just bound to get it with it because there's probably because there's definitely someone there out of a hundred thousand people that's going to get it. So I don't think I don't think I'd risk it for that. For sure. And like and, and like Max said, is that it's TV watching these games on TV. It's never been better because it's just the quality you have commentating, and you can just like have the convenience of having stuff at your house and just having friends over and stuff. I just don't. I just don't see a, a place where I would go to a game instead of and risk getting COVID instead of just staying home and having as much and having fun there. Um, Exa- oh my bad. No, uh, no you're good. Go I was ahead, just man. gonna say that uh, when I said like I would go, um, I just assumed you guys were talking like um, how there would be like limited fans, like like as Max was saying, like twenty or thirty thousand. We'd like mm-hmm. space out. If if it's normal, I'm not I'm not gonna go. But if it, if it was like that, um, I mean, I probably wouldn't be able to get tickets, obviously, if there's that little fans available. But if I was able to and it was spaced out, I would. But if not, obviously, I would not. Like, there's another thing. I was like, it depends on who they're playing. Am I going to risk my health or other people's health to see Michigan go play Arkansas State? No, I can just watch that on TV. That's not really <laughs> worth it. Like, 
if they're playing if it's if it's Penn State, that might be a different story. You know, it's it's Penn State. That's a big game. So it's just, I mean, staying home would just be would just make more sense, especially if it's just some normal like this is a built-in win for Michigan's schedule. So so Jacob, in in other words, you're cool with risking getting COVID to watch Penn State, but not Arkansas State, right? Oh, totally. <laughs> sure. All that's, right. That's, that's like that's like an that's like a. That's I'm like, just the opposite. Like, man. I'm, 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 I feel like it's just a, you know, there's like no reason to do that if it's like, I'm just saying like it's a reasoning type of thing. <laughs> like I'm not gonna do that for, like I might think about it if it's Penn State. I don't for know. Sure. I'm just, I'm, I might be digging myself into a hole here. I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> well, if you go to one of those games, you're gonna you're gonna definitely be in a hole afterwards. So. Um, oh. Anyways, so six the good news apart is or six feet under. <laughs> the good news is sports are coming back. Everything is very, very slowly getting back to normal. I know, up, I know you guys are all up in Michigan, and um, you know, I know the governor up there starting to finally ease restrictions. It honestly feels like everything's been back to normal in Ohio um, for the last, I don't know, month or so. We haven't had restaurants open, but that I think that happened last week where, where all those are starting to open. So hopefully you guys will get some more freedom up there soon and everyone gets a little bit more um, kind of back to normal. Um, moving on away from that, uh, we're going to get into this week's interview. Uh, ben got the chance to interview Chris Castellani, and we're very thankful for him to er, for coming out of the pod. Uh, we hope you guys enjoy this talk with Chris. Today, we are excited to welcome Chris Castellani onto the show. Chris has amassed over 15,000 followers on Twitter through hilarious and entertaining tweets and videos from the Tigers to the Mason Blue. Chris is a member of two podcasts and has recently brought back his YouTube channel. Chris has taken the Michigan sports media scene by storm, and we're pleased to welcome Chris to the Mason Blue Corner podcast. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing all right, man. That's a very uh, flattering intro. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we, uh, thanks for coming on. Yeah, no um, problem. Obviously, you many people know you from your large following on Twitter. What would you attribute your success on the app to? Um, luck and and a lot of good timing. You know, when I decided to do the Tigers post game videos, I, I kind of accidentally picked the perfect time to do it. I mean, it was the worst season they'd had in 14 years, and I think I tapped into the frustrations that a lot of Tiger fans were feeling at the time. Now, this was an organization that was coming apart at the seams, and people felt that. I, I think I verbalized a lot of the anger that fans were feeling. I think a lot of my early videos were way, way over the top. Uh, I have a hard time watching them, but I can't deny that they connected with people. I, I'd been making video content for nine years up to that point. People don't know that. I'd been making videos – since I was 12 on YouTube and Vimeo and these Tigers post games were the first time that I ever really did anything that popped. And I, I didn't really know how to respond to that. It was definitely uncharted territory. The rants were something that helped grow my brand, but the goal recently has been to expand with better, deeper content. And um, did it like uh, obviously you you've been making videos for a while, but like did that season did it just like catapult your followers from the start or how how did that work? It, I, yes and no. I mean, I had I think around 800 followers at the beginning of the 2017 season, and ended up probably by the end of the season with around 5,000, including there was one video where I my following like tripled or quadrupled almost overnight um and it kind of it kind of snowballed after that uh with a lot of the tigers content so it wasn't an overnight thing but like every couple weeks i would have a video that would really blow up and all of a sudden the following would just continue to grow was the uh was the really like how uh big video on was uh did that make it to um barstool or was that a different video actually no it was actually two different videos and it's it's something that a lot of people get mixed up and i understand why the big you know, popular one that, you know, where my following went nuts was um, uh, game 85 against the Indians in 2017. And then, you know, I continued making videos after every game. But then a couple months later, um, I did one after a game against the Rockies, which someone um, sent that video to Jared Carabas, who then played it um, uh, back when the starting nine did a, did a live show on Facebook, which was, like, was the coolest thing ever. And I, I continued to 
uh, be in correspondence with, with those guys who have been very, very kind to me. So yeah, those were kind of the two big ones from that season. And uh, obviously you're a big baseball guy, but you've been posting a lot of Michigan football and basketball, or at least you did in last season. Uh, yeah. Why did you move on? Uh, why did you like start covering those sports? Uh, I mean, kind of the same reason that I started doing the Tiger stuff. I just wanted needed something to talk about, um, and I had something I wanted to talk about. And Twitter is um, – Twitter can be, not always, but can be a very beautiful thing because it is – um, you're kind of screaming into the void, and, and it gives you the opportunity to put your thoughts on on a particular event on, out there. I think that I have in the past uh, struggled with my ability to ramble, and I think the two minute twenty second window that Twitter allows you to have, I think, is kind of perfect, not just for me personally, but also just kind of for the generation that I'm appealing to, which has kind of, uh, and me me included in this, has kind of a short attention span and you kind of get the quick hits with the post game videos and that's allowed me to expand with the podcasts I do with Mason Brew and of course Locked on Tigers which I started a couple months ago as well. Yeah, yeah. Um obviously many people know you as an avid sports fan, but if you had to say uh what your dream job would be, what would that be? Uh you know, that's a good question. Um I'm I, I'm by no means uh, a celebrity, but I, I'd be selling myself short. Um, if I said that I wasn't in, in the public eye, you know, I've chosen to do things where I put myself out there, put my voice out there, put my face out there. And that's tough. Uh, I've developed a much deeper appreciation for journalists and and radio personalities because, because of the thick skin you have to have. Um, you know, ideally to answer your question, I think my dream job would be to somehow monetize and get paid for my content, whether it be through advertisers or, or you know, by by other means, uh, and that's an uphill battle because uh, I don't, I'm not super sure how that business works, but I like the idea of being independent. You know, I do the podcast, I do Maze and Brew, which works because I work with two other guys who are really intelligent uh, that I can bounce off, de- bounce ideas off of, and I do Locked On Tigers, which has been, a, you know, a struggle for all baseball content has been a struggle lately because of the coronavirus, which has thrown everyone for a loop you know i'd I'd love to get paid for my content but like all content creators you know i face some big challenges the first being that you you still have to make money somehow and sometimes that gets in the way of other things and the the other job that i have is a is my primary source of income and the other obstacle is trying to find a way to get my content to advance beyond the two minutes and 20 seconds on twitter you know I, i get i get more viewers from one twitter video in five minutes than i'll get from the the entirety of a locked on tigers podcast so so monetization is the end goal uh but that's you know for, for many people becoming more and more difficult obviously a lot of us have some extra free time during these this whole coronavirus pandemic yeah. so what have you been doing with your extra time uh watching movies watching a lot of comic book movies uh, dissecting those movies done a couple commentary tracks with uh my my boss and my friend anthony at mazenbrew.com and uh, I've I've realized recently that that watching films is fine, but discussing film is something I find endlessly fascinating. I've always been a film fan, but I, I kind of got away from it consistently. But I kind of got away from consistently going to the movies, and uh, pretty soon, once movie theaters open, uh, that'll change. And uh, I saw you were bringing back your YouTube channel. Why did you decide to do this, and what can fans look forward to? Uh, well, reviewing movies was my original thing back in the day. Uh, I got away from it, and that that wasn't anyone's fault. I was in my last few years of high school, and then college came, and I just didn't feel like it was appropriate at the time for me to run to my computer and review films. And the older <laughs> your parents can't afford to pay for you to go to movies anymore, and sports kind of became my go-to. But even before this quarantine, I felt like some of my sports content – had kind of hit a wall and and you get you get very discouraged by some of the stuff you come across on Twitter and and I'm not going anywhere and once sports comes back I could feel completely different but I also felt like I needed another more quaint outlet and I'm going to be reviewing movies on YouTube uh, I think it will have similar DNA to what you see on Twitter and that's someone who is incredibly passionate about what he loves and uh, you're going to see quick improvement you know I never claimed to be the smartest guy in the room, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep trying to be. Yeah, for sure. Um, moving to more Michigan-related questions. Mm-hmm. When and why did you become a Michigan fan? 
Uh, that's that's a good question. Uh, my dad went there. Um, I lived in a house divided growing up in Lansing. You know, my brother was an avid state fan, continues to be an avid avid state fan. Graduated from there. Uh, my mom is a Spartan fan. I, I kind of got swept up in the tradition of Michigan football. One of my earliest sports memories was the John Navarre, Chris Perry, Braylon Edwards led Wolverines in 2003, beating Ohio State and going to the Rose Bowl. And at the time, I was like, sweet, Michigan Big Ten champs. I can't wait for this to happen again and again and again. And, <laughs> you know, 17 years later, they've only won yeah. one other Big Ten title, and that was the next year in 2004. But, yeah, I, I'm I'm sure I made life uh, difficult for myself at points, but it's, it's the fandom I, I chose, and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. So you said you grew up in Lansing. Did you go to, like, a lot of uh, Michigan State games growing up or – um, not a ton. I, I, I would, I would go, you know, if invited, uh, I went to a few Michigan, Michigan state games. Um, yeah. but not, not, not all the time, you know, probably the same amount of spit date games that I went to Michigan games. So try to go my dad and I would for a while there, what try to get down to the big house once a year. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, assuming that the season will go on as planned, what would you say a reasonable goal would be for the Michigan football season? Uh, look, we all want them to win the Big Ten, and the monkey won't officially be off the backs of Harbaugh <laughs> and this program until they do. But Ohio State's a juggernaut, and given the current state of Michigan's program, I don't know if they have the athletes or coaches to beat them. To me, a more realistic goal is 11 wins. Uh, you win 11 games year in and year out, you're a darn good program. And you look at next year's schedule – for the most part, it's pretty favorable, uh, obviously, until you get to the end. Um, yeah. If if they aren't at least 10-1 and one going into uh, the horseshoe to play the Buckeyes, I'll, I'll view it as a disappointment. You know, you got to start somewhere, win 11 games, and I'll, I'll view it as a success. Um, Whatever sport uh, you want for this one, but if you were to have to just pick one favorite Michigan athlete of all time, who would you say? Uh, this one's very easy for me, and that's Trey Burke. Um, you know, the two years he played at Michigan were my sophomore and junior years of high school, and and Trey Burke was Trey Burke was like a king to me. I mean, outside of Cassie Russell and Glenn Rice, I don't think there's a player who's had a more important, greater impact on the Michigan program than than him. And as great of a job as Xavier Simpson did of doing that number justice, I think it's uh, kind of a bit insulting that uh, number three isn't up in the rafters at Chrysler Center. So yeah, it'll, Burks, uh, he, he was always my guy and uh, probably will always continue to be. Do you think Michigan football will beat Ohio State in the next five seasons? The next five years, I mean, so much changes. You know, right now, based on the trajectory, based on what we've seen, it's reached a point of, I'll believe it when I see it. So based on what we've seen, I would probably say no but in five years, so much can change. You know, who knows? I mean, Ryan Day, it, assuming the success continues there, um, could be a hot commodity for the NFL. You don't know who they're going to hire after that. So uh, right now, if, if things continue the way that they they're continuing, I would probably say no. But with a major, you know, caveat of the and that being the fact that things can change so quickly. Assuming Livers stays. Who would you see as Michigan basketball's leading scorer next year? Probably him. I think I like Isaiah Livers a whole lot. Um, uh, big fan of his, I, and I like. I think Wagner will will put up uh, you know a lot of buckets as well. But I think that Michigan basketball, you look at the peak years of Beeline, uh, those were teams that had one player that the offense ran through. You know, for it was Burke for two years, then it was Stauskas. You had, you know, a couple of years, you had a year where it was Derek Walton. You had a year where it was Mo Wagner. I think the last two years, they've kind of struggled as a team that didn't necessarily have a, a one go-to score that you, that could get buckets for you late in games. Livers being injured last year really affected, uh, really affected that. But I think with him being, you know, a fourth year guy, um, I, I would suspect the offense will and probably should run through him. So I would go with him. Um, assuming that there are no like late transfers, what would you say, uh, you would think Michigan basketball starting lineup will look like next year? Uh, let me think about this now. Cause I think, uh, livers, Wagner Brooks, and then I would say maybe, and I'm, I'm probably leaving somebody out here, but I, I think between Johns Dickinson and Davis, 
Um, you have two of those three guys are going to be in the starting lineup. I've gone back and forth with this. I think Davis could potentially start the season as the uh, at, at the five, but that could change because I think that Davis, as as solid as he was last year coming off the bench, I think he needs to get in a bit better shape if he wants to be a guy who's going to get starting minutes. I think Dickinson offers a whole lot of upside, and I also think that potentially – uh, Terrence Williams could start over Brandon Johns as well. So I'd probably put that five. I'd probably move Johns, put Williams at the four, Dickinson at the five, and then the, the big three with Brooks, Wagner, and Livers. Uh, are you team uh, Dylan McCaffrey or Joe Milton? Uh, McCaffrey. You know, I think that Michigan fans and, and Michigan in general, being at, or at Michigan in general, you – being a backup quarterback is kind of the best job ever because people always assume the best option is right around the corner. They always assume the best guy is the backup. I mean, it's been there every year that Harbaugh was there, essentially. You know, when it was when Spate was struggling, everyone said, oh, we got to get O'Corn in there. I'm sure he's better than when O'Corn was struggling. They said, oh, we got to get Brandon Peters in there. And last year it was kind of the same way with Shea. I think, look, whether you want Milton or not, it would be insane at this point for McCaffrey not to be the starter in game one simply because there's been no spring practice. Joe Milton hasn't gotten in enough consistent reps to earn a spot as the, as the starting quarterback McCaffrey has played sparingly. We worry about his durability. He's gotten injured on, on two separate occasions. And I think there's a very good chance Milton could be a very good college quarterback, but for the time being, I, I got to put myself on team McCaffrey just based on experience. And he has outside of the injuries, he's done nothing on the field that has made me think that he won't be a, an effective college quarterback. Clearly um, that's a, that's a very debated question these days, but um, if you were to, ha- if you had to predict, what do you think college football will look like next year? I think it'll be limited capacity. I, I mean, all this is so strange. You know, you, I'm still, you know, I think we all are still holding out hope that one of these days we're going to get some miracle vaccine and it's going to change everything. But, you know, that's – you're kind of hoping for a miracle at this point. I think what we'll get is stadiums that will probably uh, run at, you know, 50 percent capacity or something like that. We'll get 50,000 in Ann Arbor maybe. Maybe that's wishful thinking instead of 100,000, but um, it will be unlike any season we've ever had. I am confident, more confident with college football than almost any other sport that we will see it next year. We will see it in its entirety. And who knows, maybe by the end of the season, maybe by the very tail end, by the time you get to bowl season, maybe that will be kind of a a celebration and they'll say, all right, let's get everyone back in here. Let's fill stadiums to maximum capacity and, and, and start, uh, you know, going back to being a hundred percent once again. But for the time being, I I think we'll, we'll, there will be a plan in place. Uh, that will allow fans into the stadium, but not even close to the capacity that we've seen them be at in college football over the last several decades. And maybe even a, a limited, instead of doing 50% capacity, it could just be only 10, 15,000 people are allowed in this game, which would be a surreal sight, but maybe a necessary step that has to be taken. Yeah. Um, do you think it's going to be, uh, there's any chance of it being played in the spring as opposed to the fall? I don't think so. I I saw that idea being thrown around. I think the only possibility of that happening would be if this thing just continues to be stagnant or – I'm sorry, to be consistent or to get worse. I think as painful as this whole process has been for everyone over these last two months, the curve has admittedly – flattened a little bit and i think that it would be surprising to me if by the time we get to the fall um this whole thing has to be pushed back but i it would be surreal i would put it at a low probability but still a possibility nonetheless and uh finally every episode of the podcast we usually do one non-sports related question for each guest yeah. So this week we are doing what are your top three favorite Marvel movies? Oh, it's a good question. Uh, I would say I would go um, number three. I would have Endgame. Uh, I love Endgame, and I, every time I see it, actually, I like it more simply because I think that it's a, it's a film that has so much genuine character drama that even you take out a lot of the comic book elements, it just works on its own as a as a character film. Number two. 
uh, it would be Captain America and the Winter Soldier. I, that one to me kind of changed how I viewed Marvel as a whole. That was the that was really to me kind of like the Dark Knight of uh, Marvel films, where it was the first time where I I saw a Marvel film and felt like any one of these characters uh, could be killed off. It, that movie I think kind of changed the whole landscape of the entire MCU. And number one to me, and just in terms of pure enjoyment, would be uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Uh, maybe not the best Marvel movie, maybe though it's pretty close. But I think in terms of pure enjoyment, when the idea was pitched of how they're going to make an Avengers movie, that was the one that I was kind of looking for. You have all of them together on their own separate journeys, and somehow, despite all the characters, all the you know the balls that were in the air that they were juggling, the whole thing managed to work because they made the very smart decision of making Thanos both the antagonist and protagonist of that film and Josh Brolin's performance and the writing for that character is so fascinating that to me that one uh, I wouldn't say head and shoulders but slightly above the others as as the one I've watched the most and, and probably my favorite. Those are some good picks. Uh, later in the episode, viewer, uh, listeners at home, you will find out uh, what me, Max, and the other guys think of the our, our lists. Uh, that's all the questions we have uh, for you today, Chris. Anything else you'd want to say before you before we close? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll just plug my uh, my podcast and my social media real quick. You can follow me on Twitter at Castellani2014. That's at C A S T E L L A N I two O one four. There, you'll find the link in my Twitter bio to my YouTube page, and uh, you can also find my uh, solo podcast, Locked On Tigers. That's on Twitter at Locked On Tigers. You can find it on iTunes and Spotify as well. So yeah, go ahead and follow me on all those platforms. It'd be much appreciated. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the podcast. All of those links will be in the description below. So make sure to go follow them there. Um, now we will move on to our next segment, voicemail questions. Take us away, Max. Thanks again for Chris for giving us some of his time. We really appreciate it. We're going to move on to my favorite segment here, voicemail and mailbag questions. Here's our first one. Hey, Maze and Corner Podcast. My name is Mike Lickham. I'm calling from Gypsilani, Michigan, where the Commander-in-Chief, President Trump, would just visited. And uh, while he was visiting, I was wondering, what do you guys think that Donald Trump would be uh, in football, basketball? What position would he play uh, if he played one of those sports? Thanks. All right. Uh, thanks for that interesting question, I'll just say. Um, I, re- I just looked up Trump's height. He's actually six foot three. So he's tall, so he could he could definitely hoop. I think he does. He probably does. He doesn't look like the type to have very good ball handling skills, but he's not tall enough to play one of the forward <laughs> spots. So I'm gonna put him at shooting guard. Actually, just he can stand in the corner, cut, pass out to him for a corner three. That's three points right there. In football, he doesn't look like he. I don't really know where to put him for football. He's not fast, so he can't be a running back. He's not athletic enough to be a quarterback. He's not fast enough to be a wide receiver. Whoa, so, are you are you calling our president um, fat? Yeah, he kind of is. Am I wrong there? <laughs> um, we don't body shame on this podcast. I'm not. I mean, seemed like it. Uh, I'm not making fun of it. I'm just all right. Cause, cause it, you, okay. So, um, football. I don't know. I might just put him at tight end. I don't. I don't know where to put him there. Fullback. Yes, actually, fullback. <laughs> Ram him. Put him for the one yard line. Give him the ball. He's the fridge. All right. I love that's it. That's my answer. All right. Um, starting with, we're going to start with football, actually. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it, like the Jamal Charles thing where he throws it like 50 yards and he catches it himself. I can see Trump doing that for sure. <laughs> I mean, just the speed that man has, the arm. I mean, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, basketball, I mean, it's tough. Um, I mean, I, I was thinking about that one for a while. Uh, I think, like, I don't know if I can just give him one, like, player comparison or position. So I think um, I'm going to just have, like, uh, mix a few players to make what I think his build would be. So I think um, in terms of scoring, uh, I think he's going to have – he's going to play like Giannis, but he's going to have the Steph Curry <laughs> jump shot for sure. Um, sorry, uh, I have a cough. Uh, I think defense, Kawhi for sure, Kyrie handles. And I think he's blocking some shots like my tumbo. So I think I think that's that's a good build for him. That's that's fat. So you basically just have you think he's gonna be like the greatest player of all time? Well, yeah, yeah. like that's a given. But I think he's it's not even gonna be close for anyone else. I think people might just like they might end the NBA. 
Gotcha. So yeah. I went I went in a little bit of a different direction here. Um, any of us who have all played pickup basketball, either at the, the Y or the local gym, whatever, have you guys always seen like that really unathletic guy who, who has the really baggy shorts on, who might be a little bit overweight, and all he thinks that he can do is shoot, and he just stands in the corner and just waits for someone to pass him the ball? He literally does nothing else. <laughs> that That's what I, I picture Trump as he shows up to the gym. Tells everyone he's a fucking sharpshooter, stands in the corner, and just doesn't do anything else. I mean, that shoots, seems shoots like bad. shoots like two of eleven from three in the game. Um, <laughs> his one of his two makes is a bank. He banked in a corner three somehow. I don't know how he did that. Um, so that's what that's what I picture him in in basketball. In football, it's a little bit different here. Have you guys ever seen the movie The Longest Yard with Adam Sandler? Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, so you guys remember Brucey in that movie? Yeah, a little. All right, so Bruce is the guy that he, he thinks he's good enough to be a quarterback, and then they give him the ball, and he just he cannot throw the ball. He's, he's just terrible. So then they're like, all right, maybe you can play kicker, and it turns out that he can't kick the ball either. So in, in the very last game of that movie, uh, they need to recover an onside kick. So they just put Brucey out there to kick because he's so bad, and he knows the ball won't go very far. So my position for Trump, I think he would just be specifically the onside kicker. Uh, I feel that. That's it. So th- those are my the, – the unathletic guy that shoots corner threes and the onside kicker are my two positions. Respectable. Honestly, I was kind of going to say the same thing as Max for basketball. <laughs> but for football, I'm going to go ahead and say – I'm going to go ahead and put him at long snapper. Oh. <laughs> Y'all are disrespecting my president. <laughs> it's not disrespect. It's the most <laughs> prestigious well, position you, on the football field. It's a field. very important position, if we're being honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, people say <laughs> it's one of those positions where it's like it's like safety. They don't care about it until you mess up. You know, like how in high school, <laughs> like a lot of the linemen. NFL, that's the lineman. The, a lot of the NFL players, they be playing everything when they're in high school. I think, I think, I think um, Trump could do that in the NFL. Wow. I mean, it's possible. Does anyone have anybody anything? We spent a lot of time on that ridiculous question. Does anyone have anything else to add? I to would that? say something, but I might really make some people mad. That's, you gotta what, say we're, it that's now. what we're here for, Jake. You got to say it now. You can't, you can't be that No, good. I'm not going to say it. Oh. Okay, well, um, I'm just going to point out that I had a witty line to say. I'm just not going to say it. I'll say it when we're off camera. Or not <laughs> camera, recording. <laughs> Now I feel stupid. All uh, right. So so that was our that was our actually first and only voicemail question. The rest of the questions that we have were mailbag questions. So question two came from at Skull Rain. Um, he wanted to know what our top three most overrated fast food restaurants are. Ben, go ahead and start us off. All right. Start us off. Um, people um, may say In and Out. That's the common one I've heard. If you've been to California. In and Out is not overrated. That is it is so cheap. It is so good. It's it's not. It, it can't be compared to restaurants like Shake Shack because Shake Shack is like eight dollar burger. It, it's so cheap, so reliable. I'm sorry, but if you're hating on In and Out, I just I, I can't I can't respect it. But number three, this is this is probably the most controversial because uh, um yeah ever everyone seems to like this place, but Chipotle just not as good as Qdoba. Okay. That's, That's what I'm gonna say. You're, speaking, you're, spe- you're speaking facts. You're right already. Now. You're already. Okay. No, no. Out. Chipotle. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna no. say it's overrated because it is just clearly like uh, un- objectively worse than um, Qdoba. No, it's not. I'd say it's a tiny bit overrated, but it's still a very good restaurant. Yeah. Ooh, I, I cannot eat there. I yeah, we're not saying trash. these are bad. Re- this is not no, a I'm, bad I'm restaurant. No, I'm saying Chipotle's trash. Okay, I'm not saying it's trash, but I'm saying it, in terms of overrated, Chipotle is one of the highest rated, and it just does not deliver. I guess I can respond. Oh. Okay, right, fair number two, <laughs> we got. Uh, I just get sick whenever I eat here, so that's pretty much it. And Taco Bell, number two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like everyone can somewhat agree to that one. And number one, Subway. I'm sorry. It's, oh my I, god. Okay, oh, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna you tell make you right, your own I, fucking food. I was gonna tell you, right you, now. you made the sandwich, fam. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. That's on you. Okay. I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, like I, my my high school allows us to like go out for lunch, and I used to go there like every day because I knew the lady and she gave me like a discount, right? And 
oh my god if you eat that thing more than two days in a row it, it, it's like i can get a different sandwich everything tastes the same the bread is trash the meat is trash Ooh. the cheese is fucking awful Your the job. lettuce is straight from goddamn antarctica and not a good way <laughs> i don't know what i'm saying but yeah subway <laughs> is just not a good restaurant sorry for rambling <laughs> all right so mine looks a little bit like ben's so except for my number three is a little bit different my number three is kfc a lot of people love it. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people love it. I'm That's not cool. a huge fan, and they've had some of the worst ideas in fast food history in the like <laughs> in like in like the last five years. Like they had the, uh, did you ever try that Cheeto burger don't... or, or the, the, donut the Cheeto sandwich? chicken sandwich the donut or whatever? Chicken and sandwich. someone posted that. on Twitter, and it looked disgusting. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you right now, I don't know what was on that sandwich, but it was not what it was advertised to be. Yeah. So, that's I've me. had it before. I'm just going to – sorry for interrupting, but I don't know how you make a donut and fried chicken taste bad, but they they did it. So wow. I, I, last year I tried one of those donut chicken sandwiches, and I immediately went into cardiac arrest. So yeah. <laughs> it's, throw it's that just, out there. I don't know who's doing their ideas, but, like, like they got to get fired. Like, <laughs> it's, it's out of the box. Yes, I'll give you that. <laughs> but these are the, this stuff is so bad for you, and it's just not even up to par. Um, my second one is Taco Bell. Not that I don't like it. It's just that it gets a lot of hype. And I'm at the point where, like, my brother loves Taco Bell. But he, we used to get it all the time. So it's gotten to the point where it's kind of, like, overstated its welcome in terms of me liking it. So it's, it's getting to the point where it's overrated to me. And my number one is also Subway for me. It's just, like, a discount Jimmy John's. That's Facts, all bro. Jimmy John's is so good. All right. Jimmy sorry. John's. Jimmy John's belongs it's on this list, if we're being better. honest. Oh, oh my yeah. I, I don't think so. I think Jimmy John's is very elite. All right. So here's my three. Um, I don't have. Nobody has said any of these three yet. So uh, number three on my list is is I have Wendy's on that list and and the reason I have Wendy's on the list is because number one everybody always talks about how it's like. So good, the highest quality. Okay, so like number one, I don't eat red meat, so there's that whole thing. And and I, I know that's it's random. I don't eat red meat. So um, everyone always talks about how good the Wendy's burgers are. To be honest with you, I have no fucking clue if they're good. But everything else on that menu is trash. Their um their fries are terrible now. They they, they used to have good fries way back in the day. Anyways, Wendy's just overrated. Just uh, ignoring the Frosties, huh? I I don't Wait, really. I Wendy's don't really, got a pretty good burger, so. I, it's, yeah, it seems a little it's unfair. It's a burger but... place. You can't call. You can't hate <laughs> yeah. a place where you've never tried the main item. Yeah. That's right. So, funny. so number two on my list is. <laughs> their is, main thing is burgers and chili cheese fries. You can't have either. Yeah. So their <laughs> number two, maybe for similar reasons, is Burger King. Um, but I have I have multiple reasons for this. Okay. It's I work right down the street from Burger King, and it smells so bad all the time. Like when I pass it, it's just like the smell of Burger King just. It, like, makes me throw up in my mouth. And I got food poisoning from Burger King when I was really little, and it just always turned me away from, or, like, off from it. So, I, I no, Burger King's trash. And then number number one, I had to put a pizza place on there, even though it's not really cool. fast food. I, I had to go down the pizza alley. So, I put Jet's Pizza on my number That's one over the worst one. And, and here's why. Uh... I, I always see people talking about Jets Pizza on Twitter, and I've had Jets Pizza two or three times in my life, and there's only one good thing that they have there. Their ranch dressing is really good, That's but their pizza is so bad. Um, any deep dish is bad for that matter. Uh, but yeah, so Jets Pizza would be my number one most overrated, and in quotations, fast food place. All right. Uh, my My third one. I'm going to probably go with In-N-Out. I oh, mean, my God. I love In-N-Out. Their burgers are great, but the fries aren't. The Bro, fries okay. Are trash. I'm just going to tell you right, right I, I now. I like In-N-Out. It's just not a – I prefer other places because, you know, burgers and fries are, um, are a dynamic duo. When you're you need both on a budget, you, you burgers got to go to In-N-Out. The burgers there are amazing. It's just the fries are, yeah, the fries are trash. there to – for me to want from that. So next I would say KFC. I'm just not a big fried chicken fan. 
It's just, I mean, I like fried chicken's okay. It's just, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not gonna go into a KFC and get a bucket of chicken very often. And number one is Taco Bell. Taco Bell, like, they have the the weirdest menu ever. It's, it's supposed to be, you know, it's, it's tacos. It's supposed to be Mexican food, I believe, except there's no Mexican food. It was <laughs> Mountain. Everything is Mountain Dew flavored. That's or bad. Dorito flavored. I'm like, Dorito. like, like they, they literally had Dorito tacos. I'm like, what? Like, I remember having those. And I was just like, this is so weird. It's so, just. Yeah, everyone, I think, did. I almost had Taco Bell on my list. Taco Bell was probably number four. But the Baja Blast is so good that it, that oh, alone God. kept it that's off. That's not my even list. Taco Bell. That's fucking Mountain Dew. I, I'm but, gonna, I, I said this was my unpopular opinion last time. Pop is garbage, so. Okay, but what about, okay. like, the, the frozen Baja Blast? That's, I, mean, that's I not, don't like that's, that either because that's still going to be ha- – that's still going to have okay. That's the reason why. It doesn't, for, that does for, not for, have – wait, what? Yeah, have you ever – like, Slurpees, those have fizz, like, from 7-Eleven. Oh, Slurpees are disgusting. Those are, I'm sorry. Oh, that's your how that might be your, your unpopular opinion. I don't know. I don't like them, but a lot of people probably do. No, I, I got a better. I almost actually put McDonald's. Like I know that's gonna make a lot of people mad. But like, be, it's not really like, highly rated, so it's tough to. That's why. I, so that's like, that's why I can rate it just yeah. because yeah. everyone hates it. It's the most popular. But yeah, it's but that's because of price. Fast food place ever. But that's so, not because yeah. of taste. That's mostly because of price, in my eyes. True. But a lot of people still love McDonald's. I mean. Yeah. We talked like, about this for a while. All right, yeah, it, we could, but all that's right. my list. That's my list. In and out, KFC, Taco Bell. All right, Skull Rain, we gave you a, a detailed answer yeah. there, so <laughs> I hope you're happy with that. Uh, next question comes from at Curtis M5. He said, which three current Michigan athletes would you want to survive a zombie apocalypse with? And I'll start us off on this one. Um, I I thought really long and hard about this, so here we go. Uh, number one, Hunter Dickinson. Uh, the reason for that would be, number one, he's big as hell. Zombies ain't going to be coming and messing with – they're going to see Hunter Dickinson and, and go try to eat some other human. They're not fucking with us. So that's – and plus he'd be cool to chill with. Uh, we've had him on the podcast before. Uh, we've talked to Hunter before. He's he's awesome. So, uh, yeah, he's number one. Number two, Isaiah Livers. What do we need to kill zombies? We need to shoot people – or we need to shoot them. Who's the best shooter at Michigan? Isaiah Livers. He's a sharpshooter. Uh, so that's why he's number two on my list. Number three, I have another basketball player here. I didn't throw any football players in here. Franz Wagner. The reason for that is, number one, we have Hunter Dickinson. We have him for the size and the strength. Number two, we have Isaiah Livers, sharpshooter. We need some. I need some brains, all right? I'm not the smartest person in the world, so I, I need Franz Wagner by my side to help me get through a zombie apocalypse. Um, he got a 4.0 in his first year as a freshman at the University of Michigan. Pretty impressive. Plus, he'd also be chill to to hang out with and stuff. So those are my three. All right. Uh, well, I'll start off with a football player. I'm going to take Dax Hill. That man has speed. So like he can outrun any mob. I mean, what doesn't he run like a 4-3, 4-4? Four, four, so, four? yes. yes. He is fast. He's one of the fastest people in college football altogether. Uh, my next one would also include... Isaiah Livers for basketball because, I mean, he's the best shooter. You need hand-eye coordination. True. And you were also mentioning, like, hand and eye coordination is also big in baseball. So I looked – so I was trying to access my memory of the College World Series run. And uh, you also mentioned brains with Franz Wagner. I'm going to go with, actually, Jordan Wogu. He's a member okay. of the baseball team. He's, he's, like – he was the designated hitter. He can hit. Like he can, I remember him. He was going all over the place with hits. I mean, <laughs> save their season in the Big Ten tournament. And you, and with the brains parts, he's he's on Michigan at an academic scholarship. Like True. his parents are like professors, I'm pretty sure. So I can't relate he's to a that. Smart dude. So that's my three. Yeah. So all of my three have actually been said, but <laughs> first mine is Isaiah Livers. For the sole reason that he has such hand-eye coordination, such good hand-eye coordination, I think that he would just be a must-have because then, I mean, if we need to, he can he can obviously like shoot. He's a sharpshooter. Uh, my second one is again Max said this one too. Franz Wagner, he he's 4.0 at Michigan his freshman year, and he's like 
like one of the smartest people in the Big Ten, if not the smartest. So I think that that is going to be a great addition. And last is one that Jacob said is Dax Hill. He can outrun basically anyone. I'd, I mean, there are a few football players that might be able to outrun him, but he can outrun most of them. And if we ever need help, you know, he, he can run faster than almost anyone, so he'll be able to get help quicker. All right. Um, so I was going to put Dax Hill on my list. I literally just changed it. But I'm, if, if a zombie is chasing me, um, and it, like I, he's going to outrun me for sure. So I, I don't know if I, if I can put him on the list simply because I'm probably going to gonna get eaten first, which is not ideal. But if I'm going to have three. Uh, firstly, i got to put Mike Smith on my list. Just Ooh. a legend. Columbia grad. I mean, my God, what can I say? Um, big fan of that guy, by the way. Um, Nico Collins on the list. Just an absolute unit. Got the speed, <laughs> got the size, and number three. This might be a little surprise, but um, I'm definitely not giving him a gun. But I'm, I had no Joe Eastern on the list. I mean, I, I, I don't want his shooting, but goddamn, that man's locking up. No one's getting inside. <laughs> I love how you, you don't want him shooting. <laughs> so we sent a, if there's any Michigan fans that are listening to this that haven't seen like No Gel Eastern shoot the ball yet, just YouTube search No Gel Eastern at the free throw line and his shooting stroke is I, I, I it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm so. not wasting any ammo on that man. <laughs> Anyone have anything else to add to that? No. Nope. We're no, all good. I think mine's the best. So I you know what? Well, I, I got a baseball guy, so we'll see. true. Um, this, is our, mine's the best. this is our last question from at Fantasy Messiah. Um, Dope, this was this was a weird question, and the only reason I put it in here was because I, we've never talked about Denard Robinson before, and I don't know. I like Denard, so that's really the only reason why it's in here. He asked, would Shoelace have won a natty in the past – three years with this team. I'm actually going to change that question a little bit. We'll just say like in the Harbaugh era, we're not going to limit it to three years. So would Shoelace have won a natty on any of these Harbaugh teams? That changes up my answer a little bit. Oh, all right. Hey, all right. Um, firstly, I was going to say no to the three years. Cause like, I mean, I don't know. We got Tua, we got Trevor and we got Joe Burrow. I mean, I, I don't think we're beating them, but the Harbaugh era, that is tough. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say yes. So you're gonna uh, leave that 2016 yeah. squad with Denard? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna say yes. I'm also gonna say yes. I think that that 2016 team is talent-wise one of the best teams we've had in a long time. Like, if you imagine Denard on a team with Amara Darbo, Davion Smith, Ju Chesson, Jake Button offense, I'm pretty sure that's unstoppable. Like, those are like Darbo is one of our best receivers in the last 10 years along with, like, Jeremy Gallon. And Davion Smith is one of our mo- most consistent running backs. And Jake Butt's probably the best tight end in the last 10 years. I just don't see a way that anyone's stopping that offense, plus Denard, who can both throw and run as well as he can. And that defense is just, talent-wise, probably the best defense we've had this decade. I don't see a way that a team, another team is going to stop it, even though it might be close. Yeah, um, no. Like, they're... <laughs> They're not winning the whole thing. Like, they're going to make the playoffs 2016, 2018, 2018, especially, I'd say. But they're not winning. They're not going to beat Bama. They're not going to beat Clemson. I don't like, no, just, they're, they're going to, they'd be a great team, certainly. I'm not shorting that. It's just, they're not, they're not going to win the national title with that. I mean, you have to think about would the offense be actually completely compatible? Could we go from Wilton Spate, who isn't exactly, a mobile quarterback to a guy who's completely mobile. He can run whenever he wants. It's just like, it's the offensive compatibility. That's a problem. Cause like we've always complained about our wide receivers not being used enough under Patterson. Like now we have this guy who runs all the time and doesn't use the receivers that much. So it's just, you know, I don't think so. I don't think there'll be a playoff team. They'll maybe make the title game. I don't see them beating Nick Saban or Dabo Sweeney though. Yeah, so um, I will say in 2016 with Denard at quarterback, they they you know they beat Ohio State that year. That year they probably go to the playoff, but I'm with Jacob. I'm gonna say no. 
And the only reason I'm going to say no is mostly because I I don't have the confidence that Tindard would have been proper to, properly utilized um, in those Harbaugh offenses, especially with Pep Hamilton. Um, I don't know. I I don't have a lot of confidence that he would have been the playmaker that he was back in you know 2010, 2011 back then. So I will also say no. Uh, moving away from mailbag questions, we're going to move into this week's top three, which is top three Marvel movies. Um, I'm going to set this one out because it's not my style. I, I don't like Marvel movies. Um, I, I have probably seen no more than two of them. God. So um, I'm going to set this Please one out. Please don't leave the video. <laughs> oh, my So, um, Ben, go ahead. Start us off. All right. I'm uh, a very big Marvel fan myself, so this is a very hard list to make. Um, before we get into my top three, my honorable mention – Kills me to not put them on the list, but I'm going to put Avengers Endgame. Um, huh? Endgame, you hear what I said? Yeah. Endgame. Yeah. I think it's the best in-theater experience I've ever had. I went on, like, opening night, um, like, when I came out, and it was really – just the theater was going crazy. But if you watch it again, it's there's so many flaws in that movie as, as just a, a film. Um, if, you, if you look at it without, like, the fanboy thing. I think I think it I think it doesn't hold up against these other three. Number three, um, my favorite actor in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Tom Holland, Spider-Man: Homecoming. That's number three for me. Uh, big Spider-Man guy myself. Number two, Guardians of the Galaxy. I think I think it's a classic. I think it's underrated in terms of just ranking Marvel films. Um, it's just funny, great, good action, all that. And number one. Captain America, when the Winter Soldier, I think I, I'll stand by this till the day I die. That's the best Marvel movie that has came out to this day. All right. Um, well, for me, uh, I, I guess like more. Well, I have a different one than yours. So for number three, I actually like Black Panther a lot. It might ne- not necessarily. I'm not I'm not a huge Mar- Marvel fan. I mean, I, I've watched most of the movies, but I just really liked Black Panther for some reason. It was just something about that whole concept about this an entire country being like secretly this super developed thing was like so interesting to me. Number two, I guess I'll go with Guardians of the Galaxy too. That one was really interesting to me. That one it was entertaining. It was it was funny because you know it's Chris Pratt. That's gonna have a it's gonna be a lot of you know, what do you call it? It was like a comedic release or something. I don't remember. But uh, number one, I mean, I just end game. It's the end. You know, it's end game. So I mean, it was that was the most fun I've ever had watching a movie in a theater. Everyone's going crazy. So you know, that's just my top three. I don't even know what end game is. All right. Well, that's why you don't have a list. Don't compare. <laughs> It, it actually felt like a sporting event when I was like the crowd, like there was like a crowd in the movie theater. I swear people were just like, like there was always sound going on. It, it was, it was crazy. That was like the people, weirdest. People were crying next so, to me. For my top three, mine looks quite similar to a few of these, except for my third one is actually Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Um, that's one of the most likable characters in my opinion of all the of all the um, marvel movies and i just love their usage of the soundtrack to me it was just one of my favorite it was just one of my favorite ones to watch just because i liked it um endgame is my number two much for the same reasons as jacob just because it's like endgame and in like the whole uh I, i don't really know how to say it the whole culture or it's not culture i don't know i don't i don't know what word to use but just around that movie there was just so much hype around it and i went in and i was not i was not disappointed with it and my first one is guardians of the galaxy i love how it's just so retro i love i love like the whole idea of the movie chris pratt love him as an actor it just got it's he's so funny in that movie and it's got bradley cooper as rocket bradley cooper to me is also one of my favorite actors and I just don't really see how there's a different answer for me. It's just I, I love both the actors and it's just the whole retro style and the soundtrack just all adds to like this this like really funny atmosphere. And the fact that they all don't get along, that just makes it better. 
Um, I'm just gonna uh, say one thing. I heard Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse. Um, that would have probably made my list, but I don't. I don't consider. I don't think it's like a part of like the MCU, which is like the universe. So that's why like Spider-Man, like the original Toby ones, didn't make my list. Oh, and that one. But if that if if we are counting that one, that one definitely would have made my list for you sure. Know, this isn't MCU. It's Marvel movies, isn't it? Well, yeah, but. It, some people can, it, it matters how you interpret the question i'd say wait so what what's the difference between marvel and mcu like it's, mcu is all uh, connected like they're all intertwined like the, avengers is like like the characters they can use in the avengers are like the ones in the mcu but like into the spider-verse is like the one is like is there like other movies kind of like into the spider-verse or it's like kind of separate yeah, like Venom. Um, oh yeah, Venom. I mean, like the original Spider-Man's. Um, yeah, movies like, like that. Marvel, like Marvel's the company owned by Disney. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then, Disney owns everything. That's a fair assumption. <laughs> I'm so confused. Um, on that <laughs> note, we're gonna move on. Uh, you got if you're listening to this, we're gonna put up a poll tomorrow, um, asking you to vote who had the best list. It'll be between Ryan, Jacob, Ben and chris we'll have chris's list on there as well so you guys can decide who had the best list of top three marvel movies uh, moving on to the last segment of this podcast we're going to do unpopular opinions again like we usually do um ryan what do, what do you got for us um my popular opinion is more about professional sports this time and mine is that the detroit pistons will be good in four years like playoff good i see a good young core <laughs> But if you look around the NBA, <laughs> they just don't match up to the other teams. Wait, what? Would you, it's hold on, wait, year. Haven't, oh, haven't, haven't, hold on. I know, but haven't, haven't we been saying the Pistons are going to be good for like literally the last decade? Yeah, but like they, they've just haven't. They this just is the re- first time in a long re- time that they've actually like wait. seen that they need a rebuild. Ryan, and can you saw this with for shipping ever. off Andre. Always... You saw this with just. All the different stuff they've been getting picks. They got a pick for John Luer last year. I, all I'm seeing, and they picked. And if they were going to say win now this year, they wouldn't have picked Sekou Demboya. That that's just in my um, opinion. Yeah. But for me, I think that they will not be good for like another four years. Yeah. Would you say like what is like you said playoff team? But obviously like in the NBA, I there's a lot of. I think they'll be a playoff caliber team in four years as soon as like. But, I mean, once they've been the rebuilding and collecting yeah, picks like, in. So like. Like well, a, but you're not saying like eight seed though, right? Yeah, like that's how I was thinking. No, like, I'm saying they, like, like they can win a like, playoff series. Like top four yeah. seeds, you saying? Okay. Ryan, I I'll, I actually agree with what you're saying, and I just think it's I'm not a big NBA fan. I uh, admittedly so I do follow it a little bit. Um, I think it's a shame that the Pistons have have refused to do a total teardown for so long yeah. now, and, and it's and it's just made them kind of stuck in this. You know, not great, not not bad um, middle ground. And I think they need to finally just say, you know what, we're going to stink for two years and we're going to start our rebuild. And I, I hope that they finally do that, because I, I would I would be a Pistons fan if, if they were if they were any good whatsoever. Well, wait, I mean, wait, this process might be sped up, like depending on how the draft lottery might go, it might get mm-hmm. slowed down by the draft lottery. What if they what if they win the first pick? Yeah, like Anthony Edwards, that speeds the whole thing up because now you have this truly elite prospect. Yeah. So a lot of it revolves around how ping pong balls bounce, which is kind of odd, but it's interesting. Yeah, for sure. So well, that's my turn now. So I've tweeted this <laughs> multiple times before. Uh, Penn State's uniforms are not good. I will always like people love Penn State's uniforms, but there's nothing <laughs> There's they're gonna they're gonna about, come after you, Jacob. I'm fine with that. They've already come after me several <laughs> times. They drag you. I don't care. It's Penn State. They have nothing. It's Happy Valley. You live in a place called Happy Valley. You can't be that happy. I mean, so they there, there's nothing like great about Penn State's uniforms. There's so it's like you have a like they go crazy over like their helmet. It's just a white helmet with the blue stripe over it. There's nothing <laughs> special about it. I agree. Like the wing, like the wing. Helmets like actually something like you don't have many teams doing that. So like they just have it's so simple. I just get bored looking at it. Like it's just like like Michigan's colors. Not many teams have a have like a, a shade of yellow and blue. Yeah. Blue and white is so common. Like 
It's Speed just in facts right here. <laughs> All right. So, it's, it's so not, it's not unique. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, All right, guys. Just. So I want you guys to all buckle in for mine. Um, it's going to be – I'm going to get dragged for this one, but that's okay. Uh, it is called Unpopular Opinions for a reason. So my unpo- – I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to make like a top 10 quarterback list or anything like that. I don't have the time to do that, and I don't care enough to do that. All I'm going to say is my unpopular opinion is – Baker Mayfield and Jameis Winston are both better than Matthew Stafford. That's that's my. You're, got, you're done. Guy. Goodbye. Dude, okay. Are you serious? That I'm is not, my that is my unpopular. Stafford opinion. was on pace for 5,000 yards before he got hurt. Are you I, I understand. Baker I understand. has looked as many interceptions as he has touchdowns. I, oh, here's what I'm saying. If I'm if I'm if I'm building a team next yeah. year. I'm taking both of those quarterbacks over Matthew Stafford. Winston going threw 30 yeah, interceptions. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Jameis Winston just had LASIK, though, so he's oh, good now. He's good. He's, he's, Dude, he, I'm a big, I'm a big Jameis fan. I'm going to be real. He's so long to get those surgery. That's not going to magically make him a better quarterback. Because supposedly it's unhealthy to have LASIK surgery before you're, like, 26 years old. So you're supposed to wait until, like, you're 25 or 26 to have LASIK. Oh, so, football player. So, yeah, so he's not going to be so squinty anymore. Uh, he's not going to be – I have a feeling that – so he threw like 30 picks last year. I, I have this conspiracy theory that he just flat out couldn't see who he was throwing to. Mm-hmm. Um, and arm talent-wise, there are not two – there might be two two people in the NFL currently that have more arm talent than Jameis Winston. And I'd maybe, put, I'd maybe yeah, put – I'd maybe put maybe Mahomes and maybe Mahomes. Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. Man. Arm Bro. talent wise. Arm talent wise. I'm not talking about. Oh, no, like, what? Have you underrated watched? arm in the league? Like Wait, that's so like watched a game. Player. That's his whole thing. He has a great arm. Yeah, What's, Stafford, who has a great arm? Matthew Stafford. Yeah, he's known as a gunslinger. That's yeah. His, Stafford stinks. Stafford. That's we gotta we're we're gonna move on from Stafford here. All yeah. I'm saying is that. Stinks. Tell me uh, how. Arm talent. Ta- well, I mean, listen. You can throw for a lot of yards in your life when you're just playing in garbage time, just throwing the ball, chucking it downfield your whole career. So right. um, close to the Browns. When you're when you're losing a lot, and uh, you, you, he he's the king of the stat padding, um, is Matthew Stafford. So plus, who knows about his health? So going forward, he's getting into the upper ages. He's coming off of a season-ending in- injury. I would take Baker and Winston over Stafford to start a team next year. For sure, one hundred percent. Well, if you're boys, starting boys. a new franchise, you have to take Baker because he's like ten years younger than Stafford. Yeah, yeah. Like the I only know. reason no, no, no. why is because he's younger. No, he I'm talking. I'm health. talking. I'm talking about eight. Eight. If I'm trying to build a championship year. team next year, and I have those three quarterbacks, Stafford would be picked last. So this is the worst yeah. unpopular opinion yeah, I've heard yet. I think you mean the best. No. Max, can you tweet that out? Well, it's, it's certainly the most. It's certainly the most unpopular. Which, for it, that's a reason why. But you know what's yeah, crazy? So, I don't even think Baker Mayfield or Jameis Winston would agree with that. I think Jameis Winston <laughs> would absolutely agree with that. Baker and Mayfield Baker, probably thinks he's the best quarterback in the league. What are you talking Baker about? Well, he probably, probably, he probably is. is. Um, look, Baker Mayfield had a little bit of a sophomore slump. So what? It happens. And um, he didn't have a good freshman slump either. He, I mean, great, I, he wasn't Baker, that great Baker as had a, a good, Baker had a good first year. Let's let's winning, not get our winning four Baker games in Cleveland is above average. So. The league, let's be honest. That, no, that is not Baker. Okay, was boys, not we, we can't spend all day on this one. We can't spend all uh, day on this. One. And Jameis Winston is going to be the best quarterback in the league now that he had LASIK. So right, we're so going to move on from that. Sure. The man threw 21 interceptions right. to 22 touchdowns last year. Who? Who are we talking about? Baker. Yeah. He had one more touchdown than he had interceptions. Yeah, he was a sophomore slump. We already went over this. He'll be out of that next year. You're a number one overall draft pick. That's going to happen. His sophomore well, slump. A great 6-10 and ten he, record. He had an incompetent Ooh. football coach last year. Absolutely incompetent football coach. The Cle- so, Cleveland always has an incompetent coach. Hey, he not this year. Under we got, Jackson. We got, a, we, got a, we got a good football coach this year, and the Browns are going to win the Super Bowl this year. You probably so. thought Freddie Kitchen was going to be a good coach. Kids, I was, kids. kids. This is why you do not do drugs. Who who's doing drugs? You. <laughs> I mean, I just said your unpopular opinion, so. Uh yeah. So Jameis, uh, if he can stay out of trouble and stop stealing crab legs, he will be known as the best quarterback in the league again. Again? Again. <laughs> well, what I'm saying what, 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 the first time. <laughs> well, when he was going into the league, he had no, that potential. No, he had that potential. 
He had the potential who, of being who said the best he could be better than Tom Brady. Had, what do you, who said that? Bro. Who, Tom, Tom Brady. He, I, all right, going into next season is all I'm worried about here. Okay. And 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 next season, I'm telling you what, the Bucks made a big mistake by getting Tom Brady. <laughs> and giving up on James. That might be the weirdest phrase ever. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. They, they made that. Them. That would be like. That would be like. You know what? No, we're done. I'm not even gonna get into this. You never go. You never bet against Tom Brady. You, I will. How many okay. times do you Max, have to watch Max. the movie before you know the ending? Max, we're gonna move on. But can you agree to uh, tweet that out once, sometime after this episode comes out? Please. I, I, I don't know because my if mentions are really, gonna go berserk. If, it's, if it is your take, I'll you do it for you. Mind, yeah, but I have you. I have a lot of takes that I keep to myself because I don't want. To just my phone to be blowing up with just like tox, you know, toxic tweets all night. I like, if, if it's really what you believe, I, oh, I would, like, oh, I look would at this that. fucking Wolverine corner. What a fucking dumbass. Like, this is what I'm already seeing, like, in my mentions. I guarantee if it's really your it. opinion, bro. You gotta stand by it. All I right. do stand by I'm putting it on record on our podcast right now. I do stand by okay, it. Okay, bad, bad. Okay, we got it now. All right. All right we're gonna move on. I, well, the last all right, well, then you don't have the worst one. We'll know that. Yeah. I thought I thought mine was gonna be pretty controversial, and but this has been a very unpopular unpopular opinion section. I think um, Deshaun Watson is already and will have a better career than Lamar Jackson. God damn. Right. I mean, I mean, all right. No. I can I can go I with that. Not a bad take. That's a can terrible. I, but Lamar's better. Can I hear? Can you guys? All right. I'm go gonna, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll right. hear you. Just to begin. Um. Well, let's be honest. Lamar has not won a playoff game. Uh, in two years. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's been in the league like two years. Right. I mean, Watson hasn't been in the league that long. He's won a playoff game. Uh, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think Watson has an objectively way worse team than um, Baltimore. I think Baltimore's um, skill position players are, like, boosted a lot because of the team that they have. And I, I just I, – I think this is, this is what I honestly believe. I think if you, they switch teams – I don't think Baltimore would have made the playoffs, and I think, or I think Baltimore would have made the playoffs with Deshaun and may, went to the Super Bowl, and I don't think the Texans would have even won eight games. Well, okay. Okay, okay but Lamar led the league in touchdown passes. So I think what you're saying there is you're more not confident in your head coach and building a good system around Lamar Jackson than you are. Because I feel like it, Lamar Jackson is. He's a special talent. Like no one's saying. I I understand you're saying like you think Deshaun's gonna be better. Like I get that, but I think everybody on here can agree that in the right system, Lamar can be great. So saying that he wouldn't, saying that they wouldn't win eight games with him, I don't know about that. That's, I mean, okay. I feel like what I'm gonna Harbaugh's say is, in the right system right Ron now. Harbaugh designed the system for Lamar so he could run around yeah. and be Lamar. But at the same time, if you look, the number one ranked offensive line from last year is Paul Zemmour. Guess who got the most sacks last year and the year before? Mr. Deshwean Watson. Ugh. Well, yeah, I mean, Bill O'Brien, so I'm not yeah, surprised. Yeah, but I, Bill O'Brien, so to speak, he's so Trade sad. DeAndre Hopkins for No, but Johnson. I'm just going to – yeah, I'm not saying I'm not saying that he, might, he, will, he will win more championships. I'm just saying that the play, as a player, Deshaun Watson is, is, is superior. And I don't even think it's that close, if we're being honest. Uh – no, I'm not. Okay, so I mean, I can, I can, I can I see your reasoning. That. I agree with that, but there have to be, but there have to be a little bit of constraints. I think that if you put Lamar Jackson in any other system, but the Ravens, he is just average. Fact. But okay, he's got but... the leg strength. He, he, well, not leg strength. He's got the legs to be able to be in a slightly above quarterback anywhere. Like just that puts him over the top. But his he showed that he had good arm. He showed that he had a good arm. I just don't think it's great. I don't think it's really some. I don't think that he's gonna be able to beat out the top ten quarterbacks, but, top but fifteen it's a, quarterbacks in the NFL. But That's it's just weird, my opinion. It's a weird comparison because I mean it, it's a weird hypothetical. They don't play because, similarly. Yeah, because yeah, you're do. saying. No, no, if, I'm going back to what out. I'm going back to what Ryan just said about like if you put Lamar in any other system. I mean, I understand what you're saying. What you're saying is probably right, but. You Lamar would never play in another system. If he ever went to another team, yeah. they would build an, a system around him. So I think it's kind of unfair to say, oh well, if you put you know Lamar in any other system, you wouldn't be that good. Well, 
probably not because the, the coach would make sure that he uses Lamar's strengths and builds a system around him. So I think it's a kind of a goofy hypothetical, but exactly. yeah, but every, that's the thing is that if you have Lamar, you kind of have to build your system around him because you know that he's an average other way. And I'm like, just going to say if, if the year that they drafted Lamar, they drafted um, any pretty much any other quarterback in that draft, they would be very successful. Yeah. And when you have the number one O-line in the league, I mean, think about it this way. The 49ers, I mean, they make Jimmy G look good. Yeah. Fucking, the Colts made, um, Jacoby I mean, Brissett. yeah, Jacoby Brissett. They made him look like O-line does so much. And when Deshaun can do all the things, all like if he, he can beat a Buffalo Bills team in the playoffs with the O-line and talent he has around him, it, it, it it's really impressive. And I'll, I could not imagine Lamar doing that. Lamar Jackson led the league in touchdown passes last year. I mean, he went 13 and two as a starter. He's 19 and three over his whole career so far. I mean, the dude can win football games. Yeah. Yes, but proven. that's but the same that's time the overall goal. Flacco like, could also when he was. He's the first Raven. quarterback ever to throw for 3,000 yards and rush for a thousand ever. Michael Vick never did that, so. Like he might be better than he might be an upgraded Michael Vick, which is kind of oh crazy. Oh my to think. God! No hey, way! Hey, 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 wrong. Hey. Is that terribly wrong? Vick did his time. Look at his stats. <laughs> look at his stats. <laughs> Bro, my dog's favorite player is Vick, but that's besides the point. <laughs> hey, um, Vick, Vick did his time. All right, relax. <laughs> but like, right. I'm just gonna say, I think his Lamar completion percentage is 66 percent for a running back. That I'd say that's pretty good. <laughs> that's <a podcast. laughs> I love the like, like, I love the Ravens Lamar. fans mad. He is, I, I'm being sarcastic. He's not a running back. There's, I think there was. Except he gets more yards than most running backs. All right, this is this comes back ground. to my my take that every quarterback is a system quarterback. So, I I truly believe that. I feel like there are not very many plug in, you know, take a quarterback out and plug him into yeah, another system. So they're, they're the they're the center of the offense. Of yeah, course, Le, you know. Lamar gets so much crap because his offense looks different when it's just. I, Every every coach should be playing to their quarterback strengths. Every coach so, should, but have you heard Patricia of Patricia? Isn't have, have I <laughs> heard of what? Stream Bill O'Brien, is... Matt Patricia. I mean, like Listen, a lot of coaches can't. Those are the bad coaches, though. Like, yeah. Like, so it, yeah. Belichick, like Brady, gets crap for being system. Like, oh my god, like, that's what I say is that Brady is the system. He's the only constant for like what twenty years, and they yeah. keep winning. So. Yeah. Like, every every quarterback is Brady, but that system so. doesn't become a thing without Brady. Like, I agree. The Ravens, if you throw any quarterback in there, it's not going to work. It's designed so. If you throw Lamar Deshaun in around. there, I mean, I'm sorry, bro. No. Yeah, but if, if Deshaun You're missing my the point. offense would still look different. If you, yeah, if you, okay, it would look different. If you put yes. Deshaun Watson in a system designed for Lamar Jackson, it's not going to be as good. Just like if you put if you, but if Patrick you, if Mahomes in a system designed for fucking any any you know Deshaun Watson, it doesn't work. Like it's you build your system around your quarterback. I don't care how similar a quarterback's strengths or weaknesses are. Um, I'm with you, Jacob. I, I like the I like how you said that the quarterback is the system. I think that's that's kind of a good point. I think that's that's very true. All right, that was a, that was a long segment. We yeah. that was a lot. This podcast went way longer than anticipated. We're gonna yeah. be well over. We're gonna be well over an hour. So um, hey, well, it is what it is. But we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. Does anyone have anything else to add? Ryan, you good? Uh, Everyone good? We're good. Shout out Chris yeah, for the I best, to add. Yeah, best we'll artist I know. Good. All right, so, yep, with those unpopular opinions, episode six of Maze and Blue Corner does come to a close. I wanted to run through a few shout-outs real quick. Shout-out to our editor, Quentin Cole. Uh, we couldn't do the podcast without you, so keep doing what you're doing. Quentin also has a YouTube channel that he does Michigan basketball, football, and recruiting videos. So just search Quentin Cole on YouTube. Uh, Cole is spelled K-O-L-E, and you will find his channel. Make sure to watch his videos and subscribe. Um, also shout out to, to Michael, my man, Mikey P for doing all of our edits and graphics for us. We appreciate you. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at go underscore blue underscore 13. And one last shout out to Chris for doing the interview today. And our final shout out to Lil Dicky for trying to save the environment. Hope everyone has a good day and a good weekend. Thanks so much for listening. Go blue.